warriors of Ultramar come to take back their world from the Gene Stealer cult and Tyranid menace? Will their courage see them through? This is 40K in 40 minutes. Greetings 40K fans and welcome to this, our first game of PlayOn's 40K in 40 minutes season two. JT McDowell here with you, and today we have a classic matchup for our very own Tac Kiwanis Ultramarines, led by Marnius Kalgar versus Alexander McDougal's and his Gene Stealer cult. Tac is a veteran player of the Boys in Blue, having been top Canadian ITC Space Marine player as recently as 2018, and narrowly missed repeating that last season. Alex was 2018's best in faction for Tyranids and narrowly missed out on 50th top player in the world by 8 one hundredths of a point. He is also a contributing member of the ArtofWar40k.com and a heck of a great guy to boot. This should be a great game. <laughs> uh, my name is Tak. I play Ultramarines. I'm part of the Play On team. Uh, sometimes I'm the producer, sometimes I'm the graphic designer, sometimes I'm the editor. Basically, whatever needs to be done. So I'm playing Alex McDougall. Um, he's one of the top players in Canada, so I'm pretty nervous about playing this game. I've only played him once in the past. I lost by a point, um, so I'm looking for a bit of redemption. Super nervous. As mentioned, Tack is bringing Marnius Calgar, as well as a Repulsor Executioner, a Tech Marine, a Lieutenant, a Redemptor Dread, Intercessors, Infiltrators, and Inceptors. Of course, no Marine army is really complete without a solid unit of aggressors. Tax Repulsor Executioner should prove to be a key unit for him, as its firepower can be overwhelmingly strong. Ultramarines, like most Space Marine armies, play within a bubble. You gotta castle up, stay within the ranges of your character's auras, so you're maximizing rerolls, um, kind of any of the buffs that those characters can give you. The matchup is, is fairly even. It's gonna come down to sticking within my auras and what key pieces of my army that I'm willing to lose that aren't going to affect my efficiency too much. This is really a, can the Ultramarines survive a wave of Tyranids? Uh, my name is Alex McDougal. I am playing Forces of the Hive Mind, kind of a mix of all sorts of different Tyranid and GSC factions, and I am here to win. I like the aesthetic, I like the models, I like the lore, I like how it plays, it's fast, it's aggressive. The very first thing that I liked about it, though, was because I played StarCraft, and it's Zerg, and I wanted to play Zerg. The army that I've been playing recently really is very flexible. I can play aggressively, I can play defensively. Uh, I like to play aggressively, but with the durability of some of the armies right now, I really have to play more of a passive game and be patient and earn my points slowly. Alex has a plethora of Rusted Claw Gene Stealer characters, as well as a big squad of Adelin Jackals and a couple of Ridge Runners. Far less than his usual nine, though. They're all in support of his Kraken Battalion, which includes a Broodlord, a Trigon, Gene Stealers, Gaunts, Rippers, and of course, old Swarmlord himself. Swarmlord and the Gene Stealers are gonna be key to Alex's victory here. He is a master of the Kraken double move ability, and Swarmy is just a staple in his and most Tyranid detachments. Ah, a little nervous. Ultramarines have a lot more play than people think. Iron Hands are the big boogeyman, but Ultramarines and White Scars and Raven Guard, they can still come to play. Tac's army is the hammer, and my army is the scalpel. He can put out a ton of damage, and I've got to limit where that damage can go, and I have to make sure that when I go and get my damage, I'm just taking off the edges and pulling them apart and trying to force him to make poor decisions. Uh, I want to see those demo charges hit hard, and I want to see that Trigon rip something in half. Our mission is Crusade out of chapter approved 2019 and we are playing at 1500 points on a search and destroy deployment. Aside from the standard first strike, slay the warlord and linebreaker points, players take turns placing six objectives and this scenario actually rewards the players victory points for holding objectives at the start of their turn rather than the end of it. From turn two forward, every objective that a player holds at the start of their turn will be awarded a victory point. Objective placement is key here, as Tack has smartly placed the first objective in such a way as Alex cannot place an objective to hide in his back quarter very well. <laughs> See? <laughs> 
Oh, See? <laughs> the architecture. You're horrendous. <laughs> Uh, first unit I'm dropping is a five-man squad of infiltrators. Uh, they have the special rule that denies uh, coming in from reserves 12 inches away from them, so they're super helpful versus uh, Gene Steeler Cult. Uh, what I did with my deployment was make sure that I had a lot of key units uh, have line of sight for any incoming charges if they came my way. I really wanted to make it super scary for Alex to want to charge in to the point where he would. Second squad of aggressors will sit here. Mm -hmm. Yep, make that overwatch really scary. Make the overwatch really scary. Make you really want to come, come at me. This is my uh, lieutenant. He's got the Seal of Oath Relic, so he's the one that allows everything within six inches of him to uh, reroll all failed hits and wounds versus a target of my choosing. Okay, um, so I have a unit of aggressors inside the re uh, repulsor, and I've got a unit of inceptors in deep strike. So okay. I am fully deployed. So it's on to me. So the number one thing that has to survive that repulsor is the swarm lord. Well, I know that he has the ability to redeploy a good portion of his army, so it's pretty hard to deploy against that because if I put myself behind a wall on one side, he might be able to redeploy to the side where he can see me now. So basically I just deployed as deep as I could. I know I'm lightning quick with the Gene Stealers. I can get them as far as I need to. So I can actually play almost from the backboard. We weren't playing the ITC style missions. So those windows were actually windows and they could be seen through. And I really had to wrap my head around how to deploy differently due to that. So the bikers are gonna be in deep strike. Got it. Uh, the Trigon of course is going to be in deep strike. Yeah. Sanctus, Kellermore, the Elphis, the Magus off the board. And then the Rippers are gonna start on as well. And I think that's my entire deployment. Uh, I will do a pregame stratagem, which is going to let my Magus cast two spells. I start with 10, 11 CP. I'm burning one for Forge Father. Uh, burn an additional CP for Heroes of the Chapter and give him uh, that six inch bubble that he gives plus one to vehicles uh, to hit. Extra relic that I'm going to purchase is a Mastercrafted, uh, the ability to give someone a Mastercrafted weapon. So I'm going to give the Mastercrafted weapon to uh, the aggressor sergeant. Alex takes as a free relic the pistol on his Kelomorph and spends a command point on monstrous size for his Trigon to make it even more deadly in close combat. Uh, I am going to burn two CP to redeploy three units. Uh, one of the units I'm redeploying uh, deploying is the, uh, the pulsar. Tack is redeploying three units with the rapid redeployment stratagem even before the game has begun to try and bring some of his overwhelming firepower against Alex who's done a really good job of hiding as much as he can. All right, uh, I will take my scout move. And you know what? I guess I'm just gonna give you the option. Do you want to kill a Ridge Runner or do you want to try for the Swarm Lord? You, you make the call. There we go. All right. Yeah, I'll give okay. you options and hope you make the wrong one. I don't know what the uh, wrong one is. I don't know else. what the wrong one is. Looks like Tack is gonna go first, and Alex is happy with his deployment and will not attempt to seize the initiative. It makes sense. Why run out just to get shot? Better to make the Ultramarines close that gap a bit for you. Before the battle round begins, I elect one unit to be my sealed oath unit. I'm going to elect your gene sealers to be Of course. Yeah. That is it for all of my movement. I'm gonna burn a command point now uh, on 
increasing my lieutenant's aura by three inches. Not enough for all specs and not enough for that linked Overwatch. Well, I still got no, I know you still have it, but I can, it's starting. It's, it's starting, starting to It's starting to whittle, it's starting yeah. to go, right? So, um, I'll start with a Dreadnought. He's gonna go into your uh, little dudes. The Hormagons. Uh, he's in on twos. Winning on threes. Uh, we're rolling ones because I increased the aura to oh, my uh, oh, lieutenant. Oh, good call. That was a lot of ones. That was a lot of ones. 13? 13. And those are all if you won, right? If you won, yeah. Okay. The Gaunts are there sacrificial anyway. I can't hide everything, so I'm gonna throw out what isn't very useful at the front. Uh, and then here are the Storm Bolters. Uh, so that is seven. Oh, I get saves. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> my goal here is to try and make the squad live because you can no longer see with the repulsor. I can no longer see with the repulsor. Perfect. I'm gonna go into the Ridge Racer. Okay. With uh, the- uh, This one here? Yeah. With the um, Repulsor Executioner. You got it. So winning on twos. Oh, dang it. Whew. All right, all four. Okay, then I AP can't five. possibly- No. <laughs> save that. Yeah. Minimum no. three damage, so that is- uh, Minimum of 12. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try and roll that with Feel the Pains. <laughs> I'm going to burn a command point and fire a Hunter Slayer missile. That makes so sense. do I burn the command point? I do. I'm oh, down to four. Now I'm really, yeah. now I'm really, really hurting. Bleed you dry. Um, and on a three up, uh, sorry, I should roll here. On a three up, you take uh, D3 mortal wounds. So I do one. I tickle you. That's acceptable. That is everything in range. So uh, that's my first turn. Alex has lost a ridge runner this turn, and that squad of gaunts is decimated, but thanks to the hive mind synapse ability, they are fearless and will not have to test for morale. That's kind of a big deal, as now Alex can hold objectives with them and hide those. We end this first turn with one point to tack for a first strike. He worked with what he had there. Alex didn't leave him with many options. Let's see what he can reply with. Okay, well, I'm gonna just take some position here because I actually need to be patient. Uh, I think we're off to a good start. The Hormagant's living, even with a couple models, is fine. I knew one of the Ridge Runners was going down. There was nothing I could do to prevent that. Alex really looks to be setting up that turn two. You know, he's moving into position here on the bottom of your screen and looks to be doing his level best to hide as much as he can. With so many support characters coming in on turn two, it's not a bad decision at all. However, the firepower Ultramarines bring is extremely oppressive, and he has to be careful here that he doesn't just get shot off the table. So I'm gonna metabolic boost. Yep. I might be really re regretful of this if I roll a bunch of ones. Eh. Eh. So they're gonna go 26. Six, nine, 10. Oh, how's that work? Oh, it's a one on each each guy. Oh. 13, 18, 20. All right. If I roll stats and just get three, that's fine. Okay. One, two, two. three, four. That's a bummer. Because it's this or lose a bunch to shooting anyway, so eh. Broodlord is going to run. Actually, I don't know if he's going to go very far because I need to wall this out. You and your deep strike shenanigans. Uh, you have way more deep strike than I do. Just, oh, just yeah, for no, I <laughs> no, I have a ton more. So he's actually just going to chill back here because you don't have any snipers. Psychic phase. We will cast Catalyst on the Gene Stealers. Okay. Successfully. Well, and win. believe it or not, that is my first turn. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, I'm shooting. You, you want to shoot that? Ah, I don't know, do I? <laughs> it's just gonna disappoint me anyway. Number of shots on the last cannons. Oh, Ooh. three. Uh, hitting on fives, because I've moved. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. And that is me. That is you. One is just me setting up and making sure everything can go at once. The gene stealers are getting in position. Swarmlord is in position, everything's safe. And now we can start playing the game. Start attack's turn, and we now score his objective points. He scores two, putting him to three total on the game. He's down to four command points, however, and that could be a big deal as we go forward here. Turn two, all right. Uh, so you're sitting on two? I am currently sitting on two. Yep. Okay. Uh, unless I can blow you off of those two. So, Ripper Swarms, eh? <laughs> hey, I'm forcing you to shoot at Ripper Swarms. That's fine by me. This is where I sacrifice the uh, Executioner? Well, we know Swarmlord can do it. Yep. And so can that Trigon. <laughs> and so can the Trigon, yeah. The Trigon can definitely do it. Yeah. If I move up just a bit, I can probably get them. If anyone is watching this and knows that I am a huge proponent of the Ridge Runner, two is not the answer. <laughs> eight, eight Ridge Runners is the answer. Some people are like, oh yeah, I've heard Alex talk a lot about Ridge Runners on Art of War and stuff like that. 
And uh, man, they're just getting blown away. You don't take two, you take eight. <laughs> I'm going to drop my aggressor zone. Is there any way I can move that dreadnought to see anything? You might be able to get the swarm lord if you come out. I don't want to come up way out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. Uh, so I'll force you to make bad decisions. Wisely, he's backing off. He is in tactical doctrine now, so even if he moves, he still counts as stationary, which is really important for his bolter drill special rule. So many guns and so many shots. I guess I'll just go um, with my repulsor first. Yeah. And he's gonna put all of his guns that are, are in range into the Ripper Swarm. You got it. And then the big gun is gonna go into there. Big gun? Yeah. So everything hit? Uh, all wounds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's AP4, yeah. Oh, poor little guys. Shooting the repulsor into the Ripper Swarms. 6, 10, 13, AP1. Oh, they're AP? Okay. Nope, they're gone. Nope. Bye, Rippers. And that is it. I have no other shots, um, so... Playing the delay game. Mm-hmm. Nice play from Alex here. Let's just take a moment to mention how much he's hidden his units, except for those poor, poor rippers. The whole game is just to be patient. I've got literally almost exactly half of my army in reserve. All of my power is still coming. It allows kind of everything to come in at once and overwhelm. Top of Alex's turn and he scores for objectives. This is a big turn here. He needs to make sure he can effectively get off his charges after movement. And so much will depend on smart reserve placement and target priority as he has a ton of units coming in from reserve that need to do some serious work. Take it away, Alex. Oh, breaking into this castle is just horrendous. Decisions, decisions. Running the Broodlord, let's, let's make some things happen. There we go, he's going 14. And then we will run the Gene Stealers. It's the end of the movement phase. Yep. So it's time to start dropping stuff in. So we are going to drop in. I didn't drop my Inceptors on purpose, I swear. Probably oh, forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Trigon, I think, is going to come down and try and do some work here. Again, I'm trying to put on so much pressure that it's hard to decide where the blinked overwatch is going to even occur. Right. That's, that's right. the hope. So I am going to trigger uh, Perfect Ambush, yeah. and I'm going to shoot right now. So every hit generates another shot. Yep. So one, two, three, four, five saves. So minus two, so I've got five ups. Uh, I fail both. Ooh. And then the three yep. at AP minus one. So these are four ups. And oh, I make two. Dang. So I will take one's dead and one sure takes I'm sure that was a... worth three CP, but I was hoping for two. Or no, now you get to decide to aspect scan if you want. Whew. Uh, so I'm going to just burn them now. And yep. I'm going to the color morph. First, I'll see if I burn the command points. I burn one to do it. Uh, do we actually do this for the internet, or do I just pick Color Morph up? <laughs> he's about to take like <laughs> he's about to take like 60 shots. He arrived, and then he died. Oh. How many points is the aggressor? Uh, 111 uh, points for the three. So okay, he only got about half of his points value back. But ah, you know what? That's okay because it burned the strat. It burned the and strat. Now the so bikes now, now your safe. bikes can come in wherever they like. We're going to spend two, so I can show up within three inches. So that way I can actually use the grenades because they're only a six-inch range. A smite at the back okay. into the squad here. Got it. Which goes off. Goes off, yep. And it does three. Ooh. Good job, oh. buddy. He's dead and he's down to two. Then we will cast the Rusted Claw spell, the new one out of Greater Good to here. Yep. And that's going to be an extra AP into him. His armor degrades, right. essentially. 
Unfortunately, I need all the command points I have left, so that's gonna fail. We're gonna cast Catalyst to the Gene Stealers. Oh! No, we're not. Again, I don't have the command points to spend to change that, and let's do some Mortal Wound to myself. Takes two. So he is down to nine. He has failed to cast Catalyst on the Gene Stealers. That's absolutely huge. That spell is a massive buff to the staying power of those Gene Stealers. So we'll go to the shooting phase. Uh, the Jackal Alphys mm -hmm. is going to mark here. Got it. So they all have a plus one to hit now. Yep. Uh, the Sanctus is going to take a pot shot here. He hits. He does. Want that six again. Oh! oh all right. So he takes a mortal wound on yep. top of everything else. Yep. And then at minus one and ignoring cover, you take a save. Or up. Nope, that's not. Then he is dead. dead. Yeah, good job, Sanctus. Is the Trigon will shoot into the those aggressors. Aggressors. Okay. Wound twice. Three ups. I take a wound. Two CP at the same time. So one is for extra explosives. So I can throw all five of my grenades, my demolition charges. And the other one is the Rusted Claw specific one, which is called Drive-By Demolitions. And I get plus one to hit and to wound. Whew. All right. So we will go uh, the two demolition charges here into there. Into the aggressors. Okay. So how many shots? You don't like aggressors. I don't. They scare me. Uh, seven shots. Yep. Uh, we're hitting on threes. Ooh. Good. And we will be winning on twos. Yep. Five saves at minus two. So five ups. I make two of them. Okay. So that's how, how much damage? One. So that's. Oh, dang it. Yep. <laughs> so then the next guy yep. kills him. Yep. Uh, and it was three total, right? That went through? Yeah, yep. two total. And the last one, come on, let's get a kill. Yeah, Yay. there we go. All right, so. Three demo charges here are yep. going to go into the vehicle. Yep. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'll take that. Four shots. That's pretty unfortunate. Hitting on twos because of the Alphys marking. Yep. Uh, oh, I missed that too. And then wounding on threes. So two go through. I make neither. There we go. Let's get some damage through. Three damage. Three damage. Okay. Down to uh, 13. That was horrible. That's, uh, that's going to change the course of this game for sure. Then we will shoot the two mining lasers into him. Uh, one hit. And do we wound? Yeah, we do. Yep. That's minus three. Yep, so six up. Nope. Six. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> so they're going to go for a run again from the Swarm Lord. Maybe Alex got a bit greedy here splitting fire, but he really didn't have much choice with only a six inch range on those demo packs. But I don't want you to be able to tag the uh, repulsor in on the Overwatch. Since right. I'm going to charge here. I don't want this to also be able to join because he's got a million shots. I really want him to eat the overwatch, but if he fails, I just take it twice. So we're gonna go with the Gene Stealers first. Sure. So my Gene Stealers are going to declare their charge into the Dreadnought and the Aggressor and the Tactical Marine. Away I go. Yep. No, not a bad charge. Trigon is assaulting the, or taking his swings into the Dreadnought. I'm bringing a command point so that uh, I manage all damage by one. Four go through, and those are at minus four. Minus four, I have no say. Okay. And these are D6 plus one damage. Oh, <laughs> oh I did not roll well. Nine damage instead of 13. Okay. So that was a good call. Which keeps him alive, doesn't it? He has 13 wounds. <laughs> <laughs> so exactly it would have got him. Yeah. And then now the gene stealers are going to go. So I am going to uh, try to interrupt. He has four attacks, uh, five because he, he got charged. Uh, oh, oh, wound. Poor guy. Uh, AP3. Okay, uh, I get sixes. Okay. I make one. Ah, uh, you got him. And he did not blow up. Okay. Ah, uh, poor guy. He did not roll garbage on that damage. Okay, so the acid models on the gene stealers are gonna go into the dreadnought. Five saves at minus three. So five sixes. He is dead. Oh, no. only barely. Go. Oh go. no. Nuclear. No, no, Nuclear. Don't blow, Nuclear. Don't blow, don't blow. Don't blow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, then that's me. He really has an upper hand here. Alex is a cagey veteran, however. I'm sure he's not giving up yet. 
If he can make a few saves and survive Tack's shooting phase here, he may be able to turn the tables on him. Swarmlord is key. He's absolutely key here, and he's capable of seriously chopping up those Ultramarines. On to turn three. I'm getting another turn to see how many objectives I hold. I still hold these two in the back. So I will be scoring two. Tack scores another two for objectives at the top of turn three to put him to five. It's a target-rich environment here for him, as he really doesn't have to move much to lay down some withering firepower. Now deep strike. Mm -hmm. Those bolters would be so handy right in the middle here, but then I don't blow you off an objective. And I probably should go for the points. So I'm going to try to take out this character as holding this one objective. All right, you know what? I'm gonna go with, the, um, with them first. They have six shots each, so this is 18 shots. Hitting on threes. Oh, not good, not good at all. Yeah, but you're AP2, right? I am AP2. Yeah, then it's still, that's perfection. Okay. It's exactly that... what you needed. Okay. Woo! I think I'm gonna go with my aggressor first. I'll hit. Uh, wounding on fours. Uh, Rerolling uh, all failed misses because there's still my CO both. Yep. Oh, oh my no. All right. <laughs> so two? Two at AP1. Uh, both failed. Okay. Probably two. Aggressors are so much better when there's more of them. Uh, four I mean, shots. That seems like a pretty obvious statement. <laughs> Gene Stealers are better when there's more of them. There you go. Eight. There we go. Eight. Oh, gosh. Oh. <laughs> uh, one, five, six, seven, eight. Ha, you can't shoot them anymore. There's two left, though. So, <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean I can't shoot them? These guys can see. Ah, oh, dang it. Okay, fine, go for it. Uh, six. six. Okay. It should be plenty. Yeah. Oh yeah, got him. No more Steelers. It's intercessor squad in the back. So these are gonna go into the bikes. Okay. Uh, six. Okay. AP one. And I have a four plus because you're only AP one. That's the rusted Claude. Correct. Jazz. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. So three wounds. So one dies. Everything from the repulsor into the bikes. Uh, so the Iron Hail, all hits, uh, winning on fours, uh, two at AP one. Okay. Ooh, Ooh, here we go, all the dice can pull me through. How many shots from the Frag Storm? Two. <gasps> oh no. <laughs> oh, the dice can pull me through. Uh, both no hits. Miss. Uh, both, both miss. miss. Oh, okay. here we go. Uh, big laser. Uh, we roll the one. Uh, three. Uh, AP four. Yeah, I think four is true. So that's three dead. Yeah. Uh, and then I don't actually think that I can stay alive. Oh, because I... of leadership? Eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so they're gonna die to leadership. Brutal is an understatement on the efficacy of ultramarine shooting. The gene stealers and the bikes are gone. That has to hurt. Had the gene stealers got in, they would have been protected as you cannot shoot into combat, and this turn would not have been as effective for TAC. We gotta make some crazy Hail Mary plays now. Okay, so at the beginning of my turn, I hold two, as opposed to the four that I had. <laughs> Swarmlord's gonna run. We'll start that now. Here comes the Swarmlord. That should put a big hurt in the Repulsor. Swarmlord's a beast in combat and can really do some work. Swarmlord is still kind of the weird ace in the hole. He can do all sorts of things. He's won games for me before. Uh, typically, he rolls pretty well for me. I think he knows that I like him. So what are the Psychic phase? Swarmlord has casted Catalyst on himself. Successfully. Yep. And now he's going to cast Onslaught. There you go. Excellent. Uh, Smite's out of range, and Swarmlord's going to move himself again right now. Okay. <laughs> so the Sanctus <laughs> is going to go for the... Uh, Inceptors. Inceptors in the back. They're all I-N something. I just yeah. mix them yeah. all together. Does he hit? You bet. He does, you. yep. Wounds? Yes. Uh, hey, it yep. went through. It's a minus one. Yep. Does it kill though? Oh, it does! It does, all right. Damn, my Sanctus is killing it. Yep. Now we will start the charge with the Jackal Alphys. Jackal Alphys is gonna go into the Repulsor. Yep. You got Oof. it. And then the Swarm Lord's gonna join. Mm hmm Okay. That's Literally one exactly more. what I need. Well, yeah, one more than you needed. Yeah. 
Uh, so the Swarm Lord's going to go and let's see what the Swarm Lord Because on a roll of two, if he rolled uh, Snake Eyes, yeah. he would have had to stand still. Which would have been amazing. <laughs> That's not how I wanted this game to end. Standing there just yeah, that would in suck. the wind. Yeah. Uh, so hitting on twos. Yep. Yuck. Oh no. And winning on fours. Yep. Oh no. Uh, so one goes through at minus three and also a mortal wound on top. Yep. And then one goes through with no AP. Okay, so this is the uh, six up. Mm -hmm. Nope. So that's four damage total and, no. and six damage total. Okay, down to Yeah, six. I needed to get the kill here. The executioner gets uh, D6 attacks. Oh, because you're bracketed? Yeah, so five. Uh, all right, so I'm hitting on fours, re-rolling. On <laughs> fours. Uh, three damage to the Alphas. Okay. Man, oh man, it isn't Alex's day at all. Swarmlord has completely crapped the digestion pool here and failed to do any appreciable damage to the Repulsor. I've got to think that Alex is running out of backup plans. I know a few ways you can punish those dice, Alex. I'm very familiar with that aspect of 40k. I've got to get pretty hot on the rolls on the saves and keep Swarmlord alive. If Swarmlord makes it through, then this game is still a pretty real game. Uh, but not getting that repulsor down was a pretty big issue. Um, so start of turn four, I'm still going to hold that objective and this objective. So I'm getting two command or two victory points. I'm just going to move these guys onto that objective. Um, this thing has fly, so it's just going to fall back. Oh, I am in assault doctrine. Yay! Yay. <laughs> At my face! Shoot me in the face! Kalgar. <laughs> uh, who has a relationship of some sort with uh, Swarmy. He's gonna move up there. Uh, this aggressor is gonna go through the wall. You got it. And to try to just land there. So he's closest to the uh, Sanctus, I think. Um, so he's gonna just move up as well. Okay, um, so going into the shooting phase, the uh, Inceptors will try to go into the Sniper. Might live the, through this. He might, yeah, because you've also got cover. Uh, wounding on threes. You got it. Ooh. Yeah, he, can, he has to live through Yes, that. he lives there. Uh, AP one. Okay, I make two, it's only one damage. Yeah, Sanctus, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> the Aggressor is going to fire at uh, the, your Alpha. Oh yeah, my Alphas. So five shots and no AP now. Oh, uh, that's so that's four wounds. Four. I could live through this. You could. I do. Oh, you do. All right. All right. Swarmlord is blocking off my other shots. Hagar. Oh. Rapid fire range. Yep. Three at AP. Nothing. Uh, they are two damage though. Okay. I'll fail one I'll and then uh, catalyst. Yep. Stops neither. Okay. It's down to seven. <laughs> Same there's a chance. Just everything from that repulsor will go into. Yep. So we'll, we'll start big. We'll go with the lasers. Yeah, this might just finish the rolling right, right. away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. so three 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 uh, hey. Nope, oh, only a three. That's not bad. Uh, winning on threes? Yeah. Uh, we're on the one. Oh, Ooh. only two. I just need one, just make one. Just one, fine, good enough. <laughs> so one goes through? One goes through, D6 damage, minimum three. Four. Four. Uh, catalyst again? Yep. Doesn't fake make any though. Ooh, that's not what I wanted. What I want at all. How much is he down to? Down to three. All right, heavy uh, bolter and onslaught gatling. Uh, four, five, six. Six saves? Six saves, okay. AP one. Okay. Ooh, that's not good. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Three, f make it through. Feel no pain, he's gotta start saving some, right? Okay, he has one wound left. <laughs> For that, I'm killing him with bolters. Okay. Okay. He's going down to bolters. Uh, all the bolters hit. Mm -hmm. On fives. Uh, two. two so far. Uh, three. Throw my pain. He died. Do a bolter. Yeah. Uh, does he blow up? He does. <laughs> so okay. okay. <laughs> so he okay. dies thrashing, thrashing death throws which then kills the Alphys and does D3 wounds over here. Yep. Which does two to you. Yep. Oh, Kalgar was right in his grill. Yep, Kalgar was right in his grill. So Kalgar also takes two. 
I'm also going to be getting the aggressor as oh, well. Oh no! <laughs> so the aggressor takes one. All right. We're going into Alex's turn four, and he's going to score another two points. That first strike point is still holding him in the lead. There isn't much in it here for Alex. You know, he needs to hope Tack extends too far and make a late break fork, I think. As to stick his neck out at all, it's likely to get shot off by Ultramarines. Now, let's see what we can do. Your Warlord is a uh, Warlord. Yeah, so he's not dead yet. And we're going to run the Broodlord. Okay. He's going to go 12, which is all I really needed. Because I literally just want to be hidden. Hidden. Yeah. And within smite range. Okay. So we're going to smite back there. Okay. So we'll smite here. Okay. So he's smiting the Inceptors. Yeah, smiting. Uh, Broodlord is smiting the Inceptors in the back. Uh, it Goes does off. go off. Yep. Do I get the kill? Damn, two wounds. No, two wounds, all right. Sanctus will take a shot into them as well. Okay. Hitting. Yep. And not wounding. And unfortunately, that's all I've got, but I'm still on two objectives. All right, so we're beginning turn five now. And I've got seven victory points. I'm going to score another four because I'm holding this objective, that objective, the objective in the center, and these inceptors have moved on to this objective here. So that's going to take me to 11 victory points. And away we go. So at this point, I've got to start to think about Linebreaker and Slayer the Warlord. Your Broodlord's pretty safe there. I think. I don't think these guys can take him out. That would take some very good rolling. Definitely. It would take some very good rolling, yeah. So. Yeah, he, these guys are all closer to uh, the Harm Gods that I cannot see. So yeah. the only shots I do have are from yeah, these Inceptors. The big thing to notice right now is that the Hormagants are making the character rule really gross because there's two stupid Hormagants here that are doing nothing, but they're closer to all the firepower so these two characters are safe, even though they're essentially standing out in the open. All right, um, so the Inceptors are gonna go into the Broodlord. Um, so hitting on threes. Ooh. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I'll just roll those. Yep. Uh, so five plus in roll. Ooh. Ooh, he wants to live. And this is what I like to call luck that doesn't matter. <laughs> Excellent roll, way too late. Yeah, yeah. All right. So he's got four left. He's got four left, okay. Uh, that ends my turn. Okay, well, let's go for a kill then. Alex has turned five, and he's got some specific tasks here. He needs to kill Kalgar, he needs to score line breaker and getting into tax deployment, and he needs to clear his own zone. Let's see if he can. Yeah, so at this point, I am just hunting for points. I want to try and keep the game close. So I'm hoping that the game ends now. I need to end the end on turn five. <laughs> the Hormagots are going to make a run for line breaker. So I think I'm just going to Hail Mary into Kalgar, because right. I want to see if I can get the Warlord kill. Okay. Um, and if the game ends, great. So we'll go for the run here. Okay, so you made it. Uh, you're going six plus... Uh, six plus eight, so I'm going 14. Okay. So I'm basically just going to skirt these craters since they slow me down. Got it. And I want him to be closest so that the smite to him is the only target. Perfect. Okay. Sure. Okay, so the smite goes off on a sure. five, and it does two wounds. Two wounds, all right, down to four. Okay, he can do that, he can do it. The Sanctus, I guess he'll pile on and try and go for the, uh, go for Kalgar as well. He hits. Yep. Does he wound? No. No, no wound. Uh, and then the charge. Okay, yeah. so I need an 11. You do need an 11. hey <laughs> Oh, you get your Overwatch still. You get your Overwatch. Oh, yeah. It could go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tickle you on your way in. Uh, I get to re-roll because it's Calgar. Yeah. Uh, I get two. So one I got through. one. Can't, it's not enough to kill him. Uh, nope. But you do take two wounds coming on in. Yep. So he's gonna have two. So okay. I'm just gonna bump him in. Got it. And he has two left. Okay, reward. Okay. Blaze of glory. Ooh. Um, so he's got six attacks. I'll yep. make them all the same color for aesthetic reasons. Okay. There we go. Those all hit. Yep. That's what the Swarm Lord should have done. Yep. And then he's got Monstrous Rending Talons. So, uh, what's your toughness? T5. Okay, so I'm wounding on fours. Yep. And I'm reeling everything because of the talons. Got it. Which is good, because that was poor. So, roll one separately. That is a flat three. 
Okay. And these two are minus three. So the flat three hits his invuln, so I'll four up. Mm -hmm. uh, so he Ooh. makes it. And then the other two, four yeah. ups. Uh, he makes oh. both. <laughs> well. So hitting on twos, uh, re-rolling. I'll hit. Eight, so winning on threes. Ooh, Ooh, all of them. All of them. All right, Broodlord. You're just biomass anyway. Yeah, there he goes. There he goes. Oh, it's worth a shot. Great charge. On a one and a two, the game ends. There we go. Okay. It ends. Oh, wow. Way to make it a game, Alex. Tough opponent, tough army, and a solid performance all around. Well done, Tack. Another victory for Marnius Calgar over the Swarm Lord. But Tack, the first Imperial victory. Whew. Really, this is the first one. No. And, and guys, uh, it's not a first Imperial victory? Custodes. The Custodes one? That's right. The Custodes won. Yep. Yeah. First real Imperial victory. Don't tell Sterling. Sterling, we still love you. <laughs> so, we do love you, Sterling, but this shirt is only available to those who play on, on Play on Tabletop and win on Play on Tabletop. So the Victor shirt, first ever, is going to Mr. Woo. Congratulations, sir. Well done. That's it from us. I'd like to thank Tack and Alex, our players, and to the Garage Games and Geekery for the recording space. Make sure to check out Alex McDougall's articles on the artofwar40k.com and on behalf of myself and the whole team, thank you for watching. Until the next time you see us in the grim dark universe of the far flung future, play on.